We bought each other 2,000 pound crash damaged hot hatches to see if it's worth the risk or we end up spending more than we save. We've got no idea what car we've bought each other and I think Will's bringing my car now. Ah, oh, it's an EP3 Dive R. I've wanted one of these for the longest time. Look at that. Yes. This is your 1,950 pound Civic Type R. a sub two grand EP3. That doesn't exist in 2024. There's a reason for that. It was a Cat C almost 20 years ago, which oh, no. usually means structural damage. Yeah, it does. The owner said it was only stolen. What? Yeah, he just said, don't worry about it. So I said, it's not a problem. The guy I'm buying it for won't care. So it's structurally damaged, but not, but stolen. But stolen. Are there any signs that it is stolen? The lock doesn't work. And also the, the key says an H. That's Honda, not Hyundai. It's a Hyundai. That's great. Don't know if they work for anything else, by the way. No, not, none of yeah, that works. Okay. Perfect, great. Where did you find this? Gumtree. I scraped the bottom of the barrel. I went through everything and then oh, Gumtree, and there this was, gum laying there. Gumtree car. Blurry picture but two litre VTEC K20, almost 8,000 RPM yeah. for 1,950 pounds. From the Crossfire to this, oh, what an upgrade. It's a big upgrade. So please tell me you've returned the favor. Listen, I got you Zafira last time. You know, you love that. I yeah. did actually really like that. It can only go up from here. That wasn't a good look. But I didn't need to worry. No way. An ST in the best color as well. I am unbelievably pleased with this. William Chandler, your very own. <laughs> Mark II Focus ST. Okay, right. I've had a few of these. I know roughly how much they're worth. Why was it two grand? It wasn't two grand. It was 1,800 pounds. I got 200 quid left over. I can see one reason, but I have a feeling there's going to be a couple more. I'll be completely honest. Saw this car on eBay. I bought it, sight unseen. I didn't look at it. I couldn't be bothered. So I got a trailer here. The last 30 seconds are how long I've driven it for. So anything that's news to you is news to me. But what I do know is that it was in a crash a month ago. A month ago? Just recently. It's fresh then. Exactly. You still wipe off the paint from the other car. But it's a completely standard performance blue. Your favourite colour? The best colour. Two door, manual, five cylinder Volvo engine, turbo. This is a cool car. This is the best car we've ever bought. I've bought you a new headlight for £40. You got me a headlight as well. Because it's got no MT. It's got no... Huh? It's got no... What's that, sorry? It's not road legal. No. It's not road legal. It's not road legal. So I can drive it to, to, this to field, the edge of this, this field. field. Yeah. After that, it's crime. That's not allowed. Right. We need to get it fixed. Take it for an MOT. Honestly, I'm over the moon with this car. I'm happy with that as well. Yeah, don't be so jolly for so long. Before we go any further with the video, this is a quick reminder that when you're buying a used car, you should always run a car vertical check, just like we did with these two. Every single day, hundreds of cars get crashed, they get written off, or they get stolen, just like what happened to this one. And some of them get put back on the road in an attempt to hide that dodgy past. But with a car vertical report, you can find out that history. All you have to do is enter your VIN or your registration number, and a car vertical report will tell you if that car has been crashed, clocked, or stolen. This is the report for my focus, and we've got green ticks for mileage and finance, but we've got a yellow warning for damage. We can see that it was written off last month as a Cat N non-structural damage. So thanks, Edwin. Now here's another example. This Dodge Charger was recently imported into the UK, but while it was in America, it got damaged and had a mileage rollback. You can see that the mileage went up and then dropped back down to 65,000 miles. Not only that, but there's also yellow warnings for damage. When we click on it, you can see that it was damaged twice in America in early 2020, and there are photos that show you the damage. So once this car comes to the UK, a lot of that history would get lost, but because of Car Vertical, you can find out that past and make sure that you pay the right price. So if you're ever buying a used car, van, or bike, make sure you run a Car Vertical report to make sure that the price you pay matches its history. And as an added bonus, Car Vertical are giving you guys 20% off if you use code TDC. The ST's inspection was in just a few hours, so we pulled it into the unit to fix its light. And immediately, the one key we had with the Focus wouldn't open its bonnet. Where's the paperwork? Is there another key in there? You bought this car. Oh, yeah. You, you bought, bought this car. car. <laughs> hey, there's paperwork for this car. Ah, oh, cool. I'll just slot an A4 piece of paper into this lot. Yeah, but maybe there's stuff inside. Have you looked inside your own car yet? I've been in it for three seconds. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I drove it from just around the corner there to here. But thankfully, Edwin found a solution. Ah, oh, there we go. There right. we go. Don't ever speak to me again. We're in. So all that we needed to do was swap in the new light. Look at this. The brand new headlight. Tested it worked. We have headlights. 
Yes. And then take the Focus for its inspection to make it road legal again. Which it promptly failed because of a worn tire and a dodgy handbrake. So we got those parts fixed and sent it back for inspection the next day. We'll have the MOT and it passed. For the first time in God knows how long, I am back on the road in a Focus ST and I could not be happier. And it didn't take long for Will to start acting like a true ST owner. Hello. Ooh. The Civic was having a very similar effect on Edwin. I have to embrace the Honda man straight off the bat. It's a K20. Also, sorry. There we go, that's a bit better. After confirming it drove like a Type R, I found something very un-Honda. Now somehow, this is a Civic Type R with a check engine light on, which I've never seen. Other things that I've noticed on this car already, the clutch is absolutely ruined. If the end of the clutch is here and the beginning is here, the biting point is there. It's instant. That'll make burnout quite easy, but it also makes me think someone has been messing with this car. I do, however, have one other mod I want to make while we're on the road, especially seeing as we're coming up to a, a stop here. <laughs> Understandable, if I'm honest. At that moment, I thought I'd figured out exactly how my ST was crashed. So this car has got an aftermarket screen touchscreen thingy in the middle here. I've started it up, got in it, and it's already on Google, and it has no internet, but I can see in the search it says penis. Maybe that's how they crashed. Penis appeared, and they went off into the wall. So for some context, I've actually had four of these focuses, but I'm back in one as a sensible elder statesman. Meanwhile, Edwin is out there at 8,000 RPM probably. Ding, 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 ding. So this is a Honda Civic Type R, and they're just really good. You know, the engine's great. You can do that to them all day and they just don't care. And that is perfect for someone like me who abuses every single car they get. This is how Honda drivers drive. They're like searching for something. Shit, where's my vape? Is she 15 or 16? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. Civic bro. I now have one entire year of roadworthiness. Have you checked your MOT? No, why? What is on the last one? It's not really what's on the MOT, it's more how much of it you have left. How many MOT days have I got left? You have got 18 days of road legal joy in your new 1,950 pound Type R. Sorry, I think the radio might be breaking up here because for a second it sounded like you said 18 days of MOT left. I'll make it sound longer. It's just under three weeks of MOT. With that annoying revelation, I decided to get back at Will by making him admit what happened the last time he was in a Focus ST. I thought maybe you should share about what happened when you bought your first pre-facelift ST. This is a story I didn't think I'd ever have to tell, apart from to insurers and police and my family my girlfriend, all my friends. When I was 21, I'd literally just turned 21, I bought one of these. So immediately I went to pick my girlfriend up, saw a road and I looked at her and I said, quite literally, watch this. And there was a policeman at the end of the road and he said, please, please, pull over here, thank you. And he said, do you know how fast you were going? And I said, no, no, I don't actually, I thought it was actually the speed limit. And he said, no, you weren't doing that. You were doing more than that, but it got me banned for 42 days and 42 nights. And they were the most painful days of my life. And I've been paying for them ever since. So yes, Will lost his license because of a Mark II ST. I would have too if I had one. What is the current angle of the back of your seat right now? If I see a McDonald's car park, I'm straight. I'm down here. <laughs> Good to see Edward's head go. I might have to test out if a stage two or a stage three elbow delete is the best for this. For reference, these are the people that drive like this, and then, oh, Edwin's demonstrating it now. Just all of the steering inputs that they can physically manage while driving straight. Whoa, here we go. Surfy driver, yes, bro. I've never felt like such a certified driver before. 
Who is it that gives out these certifications? I would like, I would like to get one if possible. There is a couple of different training centres throughout the country. Bradford is one, the centre of Birmingham. There's one in the station there. Damn, they're all places I won't go to. Both happy with our cars, we headed back to the unit to take a closer look at them. Whoa, you're forgetting something, no? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Why do Honda people do that? It's just strange. I genuinely cannot believe you that this has got three weeks of MOT left. But let's have a look around this car. Firstly, it's a pre-facelift, but facelift lights, right? Facelift lights. I did that confused me when you first pull up. Potentially sketchy. Why would someone need to change lights? Might be because they wrapped it around a tree front yeah. ways. The paint is terrible everywhere, along with all of the scratches and scrapes. Look how sad the Honda badge is. But from where Ben is. If you go where Ben is and close your eyes, it's great. <laughs> Can we also look at the wheels here? A continual curb mark. Yeah, a perfect 360. Can we get, can we just get a... Fair play to that man. Good job, good top work. This is a Civic. It's not like it's an intercontinental train. How do you manage to do that? These cars are very prone to rusting. Oh, oh, hold on. Hmm. That's what causes rust. Clean that out from your arches. I genuinely didn't notice this until this now. Is, this is a budget wiper delete. Also, perfectly on brand for a I type I saw up. that and I, I just sent in the money. <laughs> there was a CD in the car. Drum and bass? No, 80s classics. And it started with Sweet Home Alabama. That's not your CD. That's not Civic Type R. The can of Japan. We even have a shirt about it. That's how iconic they are to Hondas. Grab one of those if you like them down in the shop. I'd say that's a four and a half inch pipe. Nice angle. That is the pipe we want on a Civic Type. Okay, cool. Oh no, Will. Yeah. Oh no. Brand new. It could be a good thing, or it means it's already burned. It's already burned. Dirt, and it's, that was an extra one. Also, oil of indeterminate brand. Who it is, is it's automotive fluids. We've got also a champion oil filter. A tie rod end. Oh, these are not good parts to have in the boot of the car, Will. But they're free. Facelift rear lights. So maybe a front end and a rear end smash. Smash into the tree, rear came round. Touched the back, broke both of the lights. And the car was like this, and it was just stolen there. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. It was then time to take a look inside the engine bay, although getting into it would be harder than we'd expected. What, do these have a weird bump? Is it broken? Uh, yeah, the previous owner, he get, there's a tool down there. Is this for opening? <laughs> nah, Will, why'd you buy this car? Engine bay open, Edwin noticed that the Civic's air filter had seen better days. The air filter has had its neck tickled. Why is the air filter looking like the sorting hat out of Harry Potter? That's about to make me act up, look at that. Yo. But that's a K20. To be fair, probably up there with all engines. I've heard that it might be one of the engines of all time as well. Mm. Where is the oil dipstick? Sorry, let me just grab my torch. Oh man, I love Star Trek. Oh no, it's here. I forgot about that. It's on the cam cover. Oh. I think the automotive fluids might come in handy in a moment. I come. It's light and oil. This feels like some sort of biblical event. Jesus never spoke of his accord, but he did speak of uh, his type R. <laughs> There we go. What was that talked up to? Yeah. Ah! He's broke my genuine Mugen 3D printed thing. Have a good one, mate. Can you get no spills, please? Yeah. Now I actually had some oil, I noticed something rather strange. No. <laughs> Hold on. Are they held on with a shoelace? <laughs> it's a Jeep Type R. Do you want a Civic Type R or do you not want a Civic Type yeah, R? Yeah, well, firstly, I love one with some oil in it. But secondly, I like one that has headlights that are held in. As we moved under the car, it didn't get any better. Will, that's not good. Can you feel, sorry, feel the lip on that brake. Didn't maybe think about checking that before buying it? No? He told me it was all good. Great. Right, so I believe I've found the reason for the check engine light. I've never seen one like that before. That's crazy. Also, a very bad exhaust leak from that because that is two different flanges bolted together. Look at the inside of your tire. Oh. <laughs> but, Will, it's not the wear bar yet. No, the wear bar's gone. Like I said, 1950 pound Civic Type R. What would you expect? Also, just want to say, uh, go f yourself, you've bought me another car that has no air conditioning and no cooling. Not only that, but when you turn it on cold, it blows hot air at you. So overall, a, a horrible buy. car, sorry? It's a great buy. Okay, let's get your focus in and have a look. Now we've determined that Edwin's extremely cheap Civic was an extremely cheap Civic, it was the ST's turn for a checkover. 
So it now has an MOT, but it did fail the first one. One of the rear tires was just gone. That one there and the handbrake cable on that one as well. And also the emissions. They're being all funky, weren't they? They were being a bit funky, even though this is all standard, but it was an O2 sensor. So we swapped that out. And now it's a roadworthy car. Slightly more money, but not much. It's still cheap. So let's start off the elephant in the room. We have a working headlight in there now, but we still have. I, I want to know what it is that he hit. Yeah, there's a proper line there. And then also, oh, what's that? What's in here? It's a Honda badge. But everything else, like fog light, all of these grills, the number plate is all intact. Yeah. You're missing your mirror caps. Now, I do remember when I looked at the ad for this car, it had them. They weren't gone in that and they weren't around the car. So I should probably message the guy we bought it off. I mean, the classic, right? You told me about this many times. Yeah. Well, it's just Ford paint. It's not that good. But one of the good things on this side is that normally these bumpers rub up against the arch here. This arch is metal and then they rust. Yeah, it's just peeled off there slightly, but there's no yeah. rust there, which no, is No, there's good. no rust. No, no, keep going. We'll, we'll, it'll be fine. The more we go around, it'll be fine. This is the good sign on a fast focus. It still has the focus. Exactly. Back. I was going to say, they are all, they're all gone. Anyone who's modifying it, you know, turning it into a little bit of a chaff wagon, aka gone. me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking it off. Gone. I actually still have some letters. From your old one? From ones. my old one, somewhere. I think I've got like F and S. Also, stock pipes. A rare sight to see these days. That is changing because I'm not having that silence going on. Not with a five cylinder engine, it's yeah. too good. The car was looking surprisingly clean, but then we got to the other side. Oh, that's the very rust I was just talking about. Yeah, it's not terrible. But that's how it starts. You, you can look at that and go, that's not that bad. It's a gateway drug. Yeah, six months later, this is a cube. It's doing heroin. But other than that, the body works pretty straight and clean. No, I'd like to go and look at the, uh, down there. Oh no. So, you know the thing, Will, where you said, I, I think I would like a new front wing? Yeah. I think you need a new front wing. The body is perfectly clean. There's not even surface rust there. This bit has been storing dirt all up in here and down here, and that has literally covered up that rust and caused that. And just eaten the wing. It's like when you slice open a tree and, and you can tell how old it is. <laughs> Despite that small bit of rust, the Focus was looking like a good buy from me. So we got it up in the air, hoping it was the same story underneath. Well, that's fine, that's just your rack. Your rack is magnificently formed, Will. Thank you. Brakes are pretty good, and as do the oh, discs. Good car. Also, you've got blue painted brake calipers. Painted calipers. But a standard wheel, another thing uncommon on STs. Very hard to see. Perhaps some new wheels for you, or, or you think you keep, keep them safe? I would like some new wheels, okay. but I think I need more other things. Other things first. Yeah. See, I'm the exact same but I'm probably gonna buy wheels. Ah, uh, that's understandable. Mm. I'm gonna say it. I'm annoyed by how good of a car this is. I wish this was a worse car. The less you look at the car, maybe the better it gets. We'll test that theory out more. We'll buy some more cars, cars sight unseen and see if, uh, report back. Now, do you want to explain what this engine is? A lot of our American viewers who don't get this might not know what a Mark II ST is. Yeah, in the US, you got the Focus, but you didn't get this one. No, you didn't get the ST. You didn't get the cool one. These come with a Volvo five-cylinder, which, how many five-cylinders do you get anymore? King, king of the five-cylinder. They decided, just chuck it in a Mark II Focus. Ford owned Volvo at the time, so they said to Volvo, We'll take that. 225 horsepower this has, but you can get 300 horsepower for like sub 1500 quid. I can take the credit for this. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, this is my purchase. It. You did buy it. Well, when you say you bought it. I bought you, it. You clicked a button. You sent a message that said, I will have that. Yeah. Right, so we've looked around them. We've given them a drive. They're working now. I want to get them on a dyno. We've got to see how much power these cars are making. Right, so we're here at Horsham Developments, the dyno of the cars. And the first up is the Mighty Civic. I'm going to make 400 horsepower. This is gonna make 160 horsepower. I think this is the lowest power K20 anyone's ever seen. Judging by my one drive in it, I'm gonna say 180. Also, uh, I did find this out today. Uh, when you turn the car on, it idles at 2,500 RPM for multiple minutes. The owner failed to mention that to me. When I went to see it, the car was already warm, which I would be suspicious of. And he said to me, he said, don't worry about it. It's nothing bad. I, I just had to drive it down the road. And there was no alarm bells? Uh, no, not one. Great, perfect. Here we go. Here we oh. go. Here we go. Oh. What's it making? 180. 180. That's not well. That's not bad. It's down. There's also a smell, an instant smell. And the door is shut. Like the door is shut. We shouldn't be able to just manage. No. How bad must it smell in there? Also, I believe they're going to go again. And this time, I've said, limiter, please. Come on. Go on. Go on, Civic. Yeah, go on. Up there. Go on. Yeah, one limit of ash. I'm on board with that. <laughs> it's the same. It made 
More horsepower? Less. What? The pink one is your new one. What? You know what? It's better than I was expecting. I'm not happy. If your car is standard, you make 45 more horsepower than me. But that is exactly the figure I guessed. So like, that means I, I knew what I was buying. You're one with the Civic. With my Civic's power lower than I'd have liked, we pulled the Focus in for its turn. It feels strong. I think it's slightly more than standard. I'm gonna say like 230. I'm gonna say 240. 240? But you are, you've had many of these, so you know it, what you're- It feels faster than stock, right? Yeah. But I don't, it's, it's well, stock. But then there was a problem. Do you want to say what they just came out of the The news that we just heard is that they're struggling to stop it wheel spinning. I'm going to up my guess to 1,220 <laughs> horsepower. <laughs> it's just on the leash, like, it's like, let me back out there, boys. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh! What? 250! 250 horsepower. So this car has got a remap. That's got a remap. What the hell? 1,800 pounds. 1,800 pounds. So standard, these have 220, 221. So someone's obviously remapped this and I've now got 252. And also, that curve don't look too bad. No, that is a, that is a nice curve. Oh, it's so cool that you've got so much power, man. I hope it doesn't blow up this oh, next one. That'd be a shame. It'd be a shame if I got more. That's the same again. Not only is it powerful, but it is consistently powerful. Look, that's the best result we've had on this channel. Give me a couple grand, I'm turboing the K20. <laughs> so Jez, why does my Civic make no power? Looking at the graph, it's kind of making incredibly flat torque. Yeah. To the point that I thought it was wheel spinning or doing something funny, but I checked it out and it's legit. <laughs> the fueling <laughs> is uh, not great. It would probably make a lot more power because it's running like turbo rich at the top end. Great, so, like, this is yeah. perfect. So to explain, the air fuel ratio essentially it's what gives the engine the power curve so too low and it doesn't make any power too high and you blow your engine up because there's no fuel <laughs> i've got some issues there clearly yes. even though my focus was more powerful than i expected i was about to find out why i shouldn't have been so smug this fueling here is set up for like maximum power which doesn't leave you much margin for safety so you know things are going to get hot at that afr so your car's going to blow up <laughs> i'm just going to drive slowly yeah i think you should yeah. <laughs> massive thank you to horsham developments for fitting us in on the dyno even though it doesn't mean that our cars are probably going to blow up now. Check them out in the description if you want to. And make sure you tune in next week because we're modifying both of these cars. And also, if you want to see us buy 150 mile an hour cars for each other, you can check that out here.